Welcome to another video math lesson. This is Mr. Polarski. Today we're going to be talking about an Algebra 1 topic, solving two-step equations. I work out of the Algebra 1 Copyright 2009 Prentice Hall Edition. This is their lesson 3-1, my part 2. The objectives for today are, I will be able to solve two-step equations. I will be able to use deductive reasoning to solve equations. So let's take a look at some examples here. Here we have some information. Functions can model any real world situations. If you have enough information, you can write a one variable equation based on a function. Also, some real world situations require whole numbers. Make sure your answer is reasonable for the given situation. I typed answers and it should be answer. We're only going to be having one answer in these examples. Example 3T, writing a function. You order iris bulbs, iris bulbs from a catalog. Iris bulbs cost 90 cents each. The shipping charge is $2.50. You have $18.50 to spend. How many iris bulbs can you order? All kinds of good information in this problem. And I want to start with the question. How many iris bulbs can you order? We need to define a variable here. And some teachers like to call this a let statement because it starts with let. And in this case, I'm going to choose B for my variable, with B equal the number of bulbs ordered. Now that I have my variable defined, we can talk about the kind of problem this is. This is a part-to-whole relationship. The whole being the amount of money that you have to spend, the 1850. That's how much money you have to spend. The two parts of this problem is the shipping charge of 250 and the cost of the irises. The cost of the irises at 90 cents apiece. So we'll start writing this equation with the whole or how much money I have to spend. I have $18.50 to spend and that's going to be equal to the sum of the two parts. The one part is the shipping charge, $2.50. That's a flat rate. No matter how many bulbs I order, they're going to charge $2.50 for shipping. The rate that changes, or the value that changes, is going to be the iris bulb, or the cost of the iris bulbs, and that's because we don't know how many I can order. So we're going to write that part as 90 cents times B, the number of bulbs ordered. So how much money I have to spend is equal to the cost of the shipping plus the cost of the iris bulbs. So we have to solve this equation for B to figure out how many iris, iris bulbs I can order. Solving this equation requires two steps. Subtract 250 from each side. When we subtract 250 from each side, that gives us 16 on the left-hand side. And 0.90B on the right-hand side, or 90 cents times B. Next, we'll need to divide each side by 90 cents. And the 90s on the right divide out, leaving us with 1B, or the point 90s, I should say. 16 divided by 0.90 or 0.9 gives the decimal, the rational number, 17.7. But for this problem, I need a whole number. I can't order 17.7 bulbs, so I need to either order 17 or 18. So if I order 18 bulbs, that's going to cost me too much money. And let me show you why. If I say B is equal to 18, and I substitute that into the equation, 1850 is equal to 250 plus 0.9 times 18. First, I multiply on the right-hand side to simplify it. 0.9 times 18 is 16.2. Then I add these two values together. 16.2 plus 250 is equal to 1870. And it's, since these sides don't equal, and since this side is greater than that side, I can't buy 18, so I must have to buy 17. So final answer here is you can buy 17 bulbs. So 
not always going to have to follow the rules of rounding. Sometimes you're going to have to decide on which one is the correct answer. Example 14, moving into the second objective using deductive reasoning. Uh, this is starting to build for geometry where we need to solve the equation 8 is equal to C divided by 24 plus 4 and justify each step. The first thing to do is to write down the original equation. 8 is equal to C divided by 24 plus 4. And as far as a reason for that, that would be the given. Now, the next thing that you're going to do is get rid of the plus 4. So that means we need to subtract 4 from both sides. So 8 minus 4 is equal to C over 24 plus 4. And now here comes the minus 4. I subtracted 4 from both sides, and that's the subtraction property of equation or equalities. The next step would be to simplify the left and the right hand side. 8 minus 4 is 4, and C divided by 24 plus 4 minus 4, these are opposites, they become 0, leaving just C plus 24. And the reason for that step is to simplify. Next, what we need to do is get rid of this divide by 24, which means we need to multiply both sides by 24. So that would be 24 times 4 is equal to C over 24 times 24. We're multiplying both sides by 24, so that's the multiplication property of equality. Then we simplify 24 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, carry a 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 96. And on the right-hand side, the 24s divide out, leaving 1c, so 96 is equal to c. And that step would be to simplify. And we have solved this equation and justified each step. These are the reasons or the justifications. Moving on to example five, this is a little bit different two-step equation because you kind of ignore the reverse of the order of operations in a previous lesson on solving two-step equations. I spoke about how to solve a two-step equation. You want to do the reverse of the order of operations. But since this acts like a grouping symbol, this fraction bar, it changes the order a little bit. So instead of adding 8 to both sides first, we have to multiply both sides by 6. The 6s on the left, they divide out, leaving x minus 8 on the left-hand side of the equal sign. And on the right-hand side, we do simplify 10 times 6 to get 60. Now we have one step left to do. That would be adding 8 to both sides. On the left hand side, minus 8 plus 8 are opposites. They become 0, leaving the x on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, 60 plus 8 gives 68. So the solution to this equation is 68. In example six, we integrate a little bit of geometry. It gives you the information you need to know about the geometry. So example 16 says solve. In each triangle, the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B. Find the value of X. In essence, what you're working with here is an isosceles triangle. Since at least two angles are congruent, then we can classify it as an isosceles. And since angle A here, it's equal to angle B. We're going to write an equation out of that. Angle A is equal to 65 degrees. And that's going to be equal to angle B. So we could put 65 over here, but angle B is represented by the expression 4x minus 1. We're not asked to find the measure of angle A. We're asked to find the value of x. And if B 
the measure of angle B is being represented by 4x plus 1. Since they're equal, we can make an equation out of them. So to solve this equation, we need to subtract 1 from each side. The 1's on the right become 0 because they're opposites, leaving the 4x on the right of the equal sign, and on the left, 65 minus 1 is 64. Then we'll divide each side by 4. The reason we divide is because this is multiplication here. 4x divided by 4 leaves 1x. And 64 divided by 4 is 16. So x is equal to 16. This has been another math lesson with Mr. Polarski. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.